Good morning, guys. Good to see you all again. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to weather the front end of this Sherman tank to look as if it's in the uh, European theater of war. But before I get to that, I'm going to talk about a, a product that to me is brought out. It's uh, these ration cartons that are uh, glued together with white glue. You just knit them out with your X-Acto knife product number is one two six eight nine but you sort of can't do it in an American tank in World War II without having all these little boxes and they're very inexpensive at your local hobby shop like there's a few local shops here uh, Panther Hobbies Wheels and Wings uh, and they're on the shelves there I'm sure at your local hobby shop they're on the shelf and they retail for like eight or nine dollars maximum you know so um, takes about five minutes to make one of the boxes you just follow the instructions which are laid out you know being a to me a product the instructions are going to be perfect so but doing an American tank or even my Korean Sherman that you guys saw last are, are those tied to any specific period David well you can't go much past Probably <coughs> Korean War. Mm. But World War II, Korea. What yeah. about Vietnam? You wouldn't use them. No, in fact, to me, I make a Vietnam set. Oh. Uh -huh. So, but it's one of those added little mm. things on your tank. Mm. Now, once you, once you build them, you still have to paint them. Yeah. Now, I don't want to scare anybody by saying that. When I say paint them, you put 95% thinner in your airbrush, a little bit of buff or a little bit of uh, Panzer Yellow. <coughs> And just and just give them a little just give them a little um, zip across. So good depth, eh? Would would uh, British tanks have these Russian boxes? Do you think? You know, probably not. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of communication between. Obviously, there's times in the Battle of the Bulge when the British Army was fighting alongside the Americans. I'm sure that if the British are low on their little tea biscuits, they trade them off yeah, to the Yanks and, and, and vice versa. So, yeah. <laughs> You know, it's a little trade and barter thing. Yeah. You know, you give us Hershey bars and we'll give you some biscuits. Yeah. So I'm sure that there's situations, I think the Canadians as well, you know, they hook up with, hooked up with the Allies, the Americans, you know, mm -hmm. later in the war. So I'm sure there, there's all kinds of trading. Um, but anyway, I, I, I'm going to show this on the film here. This is thinned down about 95% thinner. Uh, 5% to me a buff number 57 and you just want a very mild color because there's printing on the sides of these boxes you don't want to wash that out with a swipe of your airbrush so I, I just stand back and because what happens is obviously these tanks travel their farm fields and their roads and it's just regular road wear that is going to splash up on the boxes and the sleeping bags and all the things that the crew is going to carry. So, um, just tone them down a little bit from so the, that, the packaged more, product. That's more to tone down the lettering on the packaging, David? Yeah. Just to it, yeah. fade it so it's not quite as stark? Yeah, like these, these would look as if they came right out of your regular grocery store at a Costco if you didn't touch them with the paint. W would you apply, a, say, a, an oil wash to them, perhaps? Oh, oh definitely. Yeah. Because what happens with these boxes, if they're in good shape, and you'll see them on the front of a Sherman tank, mm. but there, there's no food in those ration boxes on the front of the tank. They're full of unpoured cement. They're, you know, they're full of oh. cement powder or, you know, some protective, could be a bag, a box of stones, for mm. all we know. So when you see a Sherman with, with with this this sort of setting, where these little I, ration boxes are either. are sitting there, yeah, uh, there's no food. There's I didn't <laughs> there, know that. There's no um, you know, wow. hard tack in there. Is that right? No, they're, 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 that's all I full of concrete, some, un, unpoured concrete. Yeah. Wow. So and it's you know because when the when when the um, when the crews want to stack them up. Patton wasn't a fan, but when they stacked them up with um, sandbags, well, sandbags are only, you, you got to find them locally. You know, they're usually a wheat bag or a, or a vegetable bag, 
they fill it up with sand and drop it on the front of the tank for armor protection. So it's not like they were. It's not like the GIs have a ration sandbags. <laughs> you know, you don't you don't get them with your Sherman. It's the same with all the strapping on the back that I use. Yeah. All the strapping is from dead horses and farm fields and 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 you know um, uh, farm animals that that have reins or, or like I say horses and horse yeah. carts. Yeah. Well, if the horse goes up in smoke, unfortunately, um, there's not a lot you can do. But one of the things that they obviously the crew would do is steal all the the leather strapping, and that's what they would use to. Uh, these things aren't. Um, sort of the inventory when the Sherman comes off the, the now, boat. <laughs> now, off, off topic, why why would the Allies have all this stuff on Thoge and the tanks, but you don't see German tigers or panthers with that amount? Why is that? <laughs> yeah, it's a very good question. Uh, probably they had great reliability in the, mm -hmm. in the armor plating of their tanks. Mm -hmm. You know, panthers, mm -hmm. sloped armor. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, well, it, but, you, it, but you do see a lot of like studs. Studs, studs yeah. Studs have Stug, a yeah. lot of but, storage but, on the back. But not a lot but of studs doesn't. Studs don't have a lot of sloped armor either. Yeah. I, I think part of it for maybe is the, not to block access to the yeah vision maybe? yeah vision ports or or to obstruct the tank if like if it has to turn where the stug you know you're always going forward right yeah. so you have a perfect platform in the back. Because yeah, I, I, I build Japanese armor. You don't see a lot mm. of storage on chihas either. Just, no. Uh, well, once again, back to the Marine thing, right? Yeah. They're they're fighting on an island. Yeah. Their their home base is probably not too far away. Yeah, a bunker mm. nearby. <laughs> or, or yeah, or or uh, you know, yeah. uh, one little short boat ride away. Yeah. You know, to get the supplies. <laughs> you know, like the Marines, there, there's normally a few boats offshore, and a and a half a mile run in a in a, in a little motorboat. You go and get brand new supplies it, off the ship. <laughs> it almost seems you can't you can't build a Sherman without stowage. It just looks odd. It looks bare. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's very true. Now, now, do the do the U.S. Army Shermans have things on them? Mm. They don't either. Mm. Only in references. Like like mm. obviously, you're gonna find that there's Shermans in the Pacific that are stacked mm -hmm. with things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But let's let's pretend for a minute that there's uh, 500 tanks out there. I would suggest that maybe 400 of them don't have a thing on them. <laughs> yeah. So those yeah. are those kind of ratios. Interesting. And, and it's just based on, I'm just based on the amount of photographs that I've looked at. If I've looked at 400 photographs, yeah. 300 of them don't have a thing on them. <laughs> the, you know, the Germans, on a, on Army a, or Marine. On a side note, continue with, with Sherman tanks, I was, I was uh, tapping Steve Zaloga's brain in amps because I want to do a Sherman and I'm not a Sherman expert. And I want to do a Pacific Sherman, and I think it's Be Beezlebub, one of the Marines, but we have sandbags on the back of the, the tank with right. those waiting trunks. But I see pictures with sandbags there, and, and pictures with the waiting trunks, but not both. And he said, well, they wouldn't put the sandbags on the back while they're on a ship, because it's heavy, waiting right. through the water. They would take the trunks off and then put the sandbags on the beach, so right. you got to start thinking about mm. the research and say, "Well, you, it doesn't, it, you can't do that." It's right, weird, right. So it's I yell and at even to when they had all the uh, the wooden side too, yes, you know, yes, because the Japanese magnetic mines are, yeah. you know, they throw them up and over the yeah. top and yep. that sort of thing. Yeah. So, and and they, they weren't easy to replace Sherman tanks mm. in the Pacific because it's a long distance. Mm -hmm. You know, where were they stored? Well, San Francisco or Hawaii, <laughs> yeah. or, you know, yeah. so. It's not like you go and get some more. Yeah. <laughs> so they were, they cherished them. Yeah. You know, they had to look after them. And quite often, one of the crew members would have been a mechanic by trade. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. at, during civilian times. I mean, that's just obvious. You know, mm -hmm. you you need you just can't have a crew. Yeah. They just can't throw the four of us together yeah. and say, hop in. You know, one of us has to have the, you know, you know the sort of mechanics background. So, um, back to these just for a second, Herbie. Yeah, so obviously these carry all the rations, but once the boxes are empty, if they're in good shape, mm. they load them up. Mm. So it's not, um, it's not uncommon to see the ration boxes um, on the fronts, mm. but trust me, they're not full of food. Mm. <laughs> um, you know, they'll, they'll use anything to fill into these boxes, you know, pieces of steel, or a, a plate, or a, like not a pie plate, I'm talking a metal plate, yeah. but 
whatever they could use for, and, you know, it's their lives, right? So, but anyway, guys, it's just, uh, it's a great product, very inexpensive, very effective, and this one has a little strap on it. That's just a piece of electrical tape that I've cut really thin and just wrapped it around. So, this little box here has, and you can use a flat solder or, or whatever you want as far as the little, you know, packaging, you know, and a strap to hold it down. So, just a neat little product for American tanks and half tracks and Jeeps and whatever. Now, to me, I uh, should expand on this a little bit, put maybe some medical boxes, uh, that sort of thing. You know, that would be kind of a neat thing to do. And I'm, and I'm sure that this is very inexpensive for to me to produce. Is that a new product then? Uh, to be honest, I I wouldn't say it's new 2023, but certainly in the last 18 months, maybe 24 months, okay. to me has had this out. Okay. So I'll just reference the product number once more. It's number 12689, and it just says U.S. ration cartons, World War II. So okay. anybody that wants to snag those... And as far as building one of them, I think I think it takes maybe seven or eight minutes to put one together. So if, because there's a a little more to it, you know these little packages, these boxes, when folded, slide into these boxes. You know, mm. so there's a little bit of some, extra some, little yeah. neat some some, some, some yeah. little assembly. And just plain old white glue will do. White glue, yeah. you know, even watered down. Mm. So, but then, and just don't forget to give them a little shot of buff or something just to take the Costco kind of mm. cartony look brand new, mm. you know, fresh out of the box kind of look away from it. They wouldn't have been clean very long. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Interesting. So those are neat. And, um, all right, so here's our little Sherman. We're going to turn this shelf queen, which I've deckled and uh, brought to all of drab. Um, this tank is not going to be one that's going to sit on my shelf. We're going to use it for um, this sort of setting only. So please don't try to zero in on what's wrong with this Sherman or, you know, the wheels are missing or whatever. Don't don't worry about it. It's a shelf queen. It's just, uh, you know, something that we're going to use as a, as a prop for our display and show the details. So what I'm going to do is try to turn the front end of this um into that you know take this and turn it into that so it'll take a couple episodes i'm sure and um so the first thing out of that the first thing out of the um, i'm gonna do is just give it a nice little buff but i'm only gonna go about halfway up just above the little machine gun on the front i'm gonna um spray a little bit of buff right over the decals right over the and this would have been like i say the the kind of dust that would have turned up, you know, just normal travel off the roads and off the... I want to hit the... the so uh, if rubber hits the compressor, we're away. So, so Dave, what you're simulating is dust kick up as opposed to modulating the color of the olive drab, correct? Correct. Okay. So this would have been if these two tanks were traveling... Yeah. You know, in convoy. Yeah. If you notice, uh, smart, they're not that close together. The Sherman tanks are not in a line. They're not buckled like this unless they're parked and, the, and you know, the enemy is five yeah. miles away, maybe. Yeah. But in general, they're, 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 for obvious reasons, they're far enough apart. But this tank is going to generate dust. It's that simple and that dust is going to land on our tank. Just over, just, yeah, right there. Perfect. Sorry, yeah. <coughs> what uh, what air pressure are you using, would you know, slightly? Oh, well, probably 15. I oh, like wow. spraying okay. at 15. Wow, okay. And that's with most everything that I, that I do. Mm. I don't ever spray with much more than that, but I, I certainly, Harvey, I go way down. I can yeah. go down to 6. Yeah, I was just about to say, I'm usually 6 to 8. Yeah, if I'm yeah. doing a... a yeah. German camouflage or something. I'm down to 
eight percent. Yes, right. And very thin. Temperature. Right. You know? And you mentioned this this buff is at what thinner ratio did you say? Now this is about ninety five percent thinner. Wow. This to, to me a lacquer thinner. Yes, right. Okay. Five percent color. Okay, and is that because you want it to look like dust as opposed to a camouflage color? <laughs> yeah, and I don't want to lose the decal, and right. I don't want to lose my olive drab. Right. This is just a film, yes, you know? Yes, yes. This is like the film that would be on your car if you, say, drove, you know, 15 miles. Yes. You know, out of the car wash, you drove 15 miles, that's the dust I'm trying to put oh, back on. Right. Yeah. Hmm. And there's no gloss in here, I'm just, this is flat, flat buff. Now, now, I know you're using this for a prop, Dave, but w would you, you'd also have to apply that on the tracks too, right? To, to yes. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll take this down the back here, yeah. especially on the on the sides yes. by the American Star, you know, up around the back mm -hmm. here, Harvey. Mm -hmm. I would nail it the same right. color up in here. And then once you're going to, a lot of, I talk to Dave a lot, some guys do the model with the tracks on, this one is with the tracks off. That's your preference, but you'd have to apply that mist to the tracks, even if you don't. Right, right. Just to, yeah, to get it consistent. Because you get the consistent, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. And the other thing, I, I don't know if it's uh, it's just for comment, but I don't necessarily build my Shermans with these bogies on it either. Uh, I'll totally paint it without these on, so that I can get in behind here and put my mud on. And then I'll attach, but because this is a shelf queen, <laughs> Dave, you hand. mentioned that you you do everything on there, don't right? Do, or do you? Is that a new process for you? That depends. Like I, that depends. If mm. if it's easy to do it with the road wheels and the bogies off, okay. I'll do that. Okay. But sometimes it's leave it on. Yeah. So I'm not going to go too far back here because we're not going to paint really too far back. But. So this is just the foundation for what's to come. Now in the end, you may not recognize this buff that I just put on there in, in the end product. Like you can barely see it on this Sherman here. But you can't go from mud to olive drab. You have to have a gr gradual um, right. 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 film of mud and dirt and dust. And all you have to do, back to what we were talking about uh, earlier, about the mud flaps on a, on a dump truck in, say, January or here in Ontario, um, th that, that's where we're aiming for, you know, and, and we all know what that looks like. Mm -hmm. You know, we've all taken a photograph of a bulldozer to apply to our tracks and what have you on our tanks. So th that's what this is uh, trying to accomplish. So, so this is that first layer now so we have i don't know if the camera picks it up too much but i think you can definitely see yes um yeah a, a little bit of, from here a little yeah. bit yeah. of dusting yeah. so next is we're going to shift to our asphalt <laughs> can't wait for this <laughs> all right one of the things that you're going to need and this gives it the body because this is a very smooth, this is like margarine, this asphalt. And a lot of the products, AK, in these Earth Tone, Earth Effects products, um, take on the smoothness of margarine or butter or what have you. Well, in my case, that, that doesn't work. So what this is, this is parsley. Just regular parsley that you'd use at, the, at you know, cooking in your kitchen. And then I bake it at 425 for about 40 minutes. And what it does is it browns it all up because this will be in your in your wife's kitchen. Nice bright green, mm. you know, it's an additive to mm. cooking. Right. So what I do is I, I bake it and, and it's very inexpensive. You can find a whole jar of paste, uh, parsley at Costco for three dollars. <laughs> I mean, it's which one will, of those. Which will last you like a thousand models. A thousand models. models. <laughs> So it's very inexpensive, but you have to, you have to, you have to use the oven treatment on it. it, it it's no good when it's green. It doesn't work. Why? Because it, 
basically bakes and it becomes um, very crispy. Is that to, that's to add texture to the... This to is going to add the texture yeah. to mm. our product. Now, would you, would you use that instead of, say, plaster of Paris, which is the older method? Um, the nice thing, this is, doesn't get as fine as plaster of Paris. Oh, okay. You know, this, this, this I can make it as fine or not as I fine see. as I want. Yeah. So I, I pinch it in my fingers to uh, make it smaller, yeah. but then I add a little bit more just regular parsley and it. it's just, you know, it just looks like ground cover in 35th scale. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's excellent. And can you imagine the benefits once you've used it? You could actually just throw it on the meal at the end of the night, <laughs> if if need be, you know. So so you you in this case, when you're doing your groundwork, just use the parsley as your ground cover. Hmm. Um, you don't have to use a lot of asphalt. You can use your regular, um, you know, painted brown or mm -hmm. brownish. Add this on with a little bit of white glue, and it's a great ground cover for a lot of figure guys use this because you know they're using that little base yeah. for a one standing figure and they're doing um you know some sort of figurine of that time you know it doesn't matter what period but this is a fantastic ground cover and it's dirt 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 cheap so anyway i mix that up crush it and if and if you read this article that Lester Platt, this is where I got this from. Lester Plaskett talked about it in the in the article that he did on his Sherman, and that I just basically took a little bit of that, you know. So we're all sharing, guys. We're all, you know, that's why they put magazines out. That's why he wrote it in there, so that, you know, five months later, I could come on here and talk about it. So, you know, it's a great, inexpensive way to, to get the ground cover. So then, you know, on, on a side note, when I was working on my uh, T lav Canadian T lav right, I was trying to get the proper uh, not you know, tra traction texture on the top of the the turret on uh, right. the top of the hull, and I found uh, that chinchilla sand sifted right. mixed with paint, and you apply is perfect. Yeah, uh, it gives you that mm. little sand texture that the crew would have on the on the surface of the yeah the anti skid anti skid yep. yeah. So so feel free to yeah, and it's an inexpensive way totally. of doing it. Now yeah. I have enough chinchilla sand to do a thousand teeth. <laughs> yeah, you can do the whole. Yeah. So this, like I say, it's sort of like margarine, this mm. texture. Interesting. And it's jet black and it dries, if you use it as asphalt, it will dry just like the tarmac on a... Dave, you, you like that too. I, I still, you know, I'm old, maybe I'm old school. I mix the powders with, with plaster of Paris. But, you know, we're all different, right? I've, I seldom have... Now that I'm looking at what Dave's... Well, doing I, just, I think, it, I think it's, it's convenient. Yeah, I'm right. looking at it now. Hey, well, maybe look, I mean, look at it. It's just like jet black, yeah. you know? Wow. So anyway, you, you dig into the pot a little bit. And I'm putting it right on top of my parsley. But it's it's going to still be jet black. There's still color to be added here. But that's really the base for really, like your deepest, darkest mud. Oh yeah, this is bog. This yeah. is like yeah. bog stuff. <laughs> so then I take uh, our pigments. So uh, let me just show you how, like this is jet black fresh poured asphalt it's a great product if, if you're doing a road you know contemporary stuff in the ukraine setting or or, or any setting it's perfect uh it, it, car modelers use this asphalt for their you know bases they use for their cars 24 scale cars so i'm going to use just a dry mud color but you can use almost any brown pigment that you want it, it, just any medium brown Oh, and which one is that? Dave? This this one is uh, 502 and it's uh, dry mud. Dry mud. And I just I'm just gonna mix that in there with the asphalt. Hmm. So it's just the camera can pick that up. You can see how the hobbies progressed. Remember the 1970s, those old scale military modeling books 
where they would apply dirty thinner as to that. Yeah, God, exactly. Now you're using all these powders and all these new fangled techniques. It's really evolved. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, Chef Payne didn't have this luxury. No. <laughs> but his stuff still stands. His stuff still stands. So now we have our porridge ready to apply to the tank. And if the camera can pick that up, it, it's kind of bog. Bog with a little bit of dirtiness now. Hmm. The other thing, Harvey, that's nice to add in, especially if you're doing, once I get to the running gear um, on the tank, is you, you take a little bit of hemp. You know, just, just uh, hemp rope for... Hmm twine for yeah. wrapping a present or mm -hmm. not a present but a, a package mm -hmm. um just cut that into the appropriate length mm -hmm. it, it also will look like you know the grasses yeah. you know I, I like also like the uh i think vallejo makes it the crushed grass that's that stuff's nice too oh the seed ball the, the seed yeah oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah that'll work yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So it's not jet black anymore. You, I don't know if the camera will pick up on it. It is like a, like, but it's a very dark brown. Yeah. Yep. And I can just continue to add right pigment until I'm satisfied. So, so the, 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 the more pigment, the lighter. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. As long as, and, and here's your reference. Here's what I don't want. I don't want that Hershey chocolate color. Yeah. You know Hershey's chocolate, sort of brown. I'm not aiming for that whatsoever. I, I could buy that off a shelf. AK, make that product. I don't think Hershey's Chocolate Bar Company would like what you're saying now, but yes. Oh, we're talking no, no, about it's modeling. The best, it's, yes. It's the best chocolate. There you go. It just <laughs> doesn't make, now. it's just not a great modeling product. <laughs> Hershey's coming the, after the us. The CEO of Hershey's is going to come us. after us. So, where's my little... Uh, if you want to pass me my little ground cover, there we go. So here's our little ground cover that I made it, made up a couple of days ago. I ran a, a Sherman track through it, and and this is just sort of a little base for uh, you know show and tell stuff, you know, to get my point across a little better. Um, and that dries hard, yes. Hard as a rock, really. Hmm. Hmm. All right, so now we're gonna, and there, once we put the mud on the tank, and, and you can, like I said, you, you thicken it up by using more parsley, uh, make it browner by adding more pigment, but I think I'm where I'm at. This is that bog kind of color. So this is not a, a color, I don't think, that you're gonna use in July. If, if your setting for your tank is, is you know, Bala Normandy, uh, yes, is there fields of dirt like this? I mean, obviously in Normandy they're making wine or, you know, it's, there's going to be this color on the ground in, in July. I'm not saying there isn't. It's just more, it's just better if you're doing a setting that's sort of moist January, February type of setting. It just... Alrighty. Now, one of the things that also the Americans did is they always uh, would take a fence beam or a, or a piece of piece of wood off of an old barn or a shed or a door, and you know they always add a little piece to hold all the belongings. You know you. And like John Rosengrant, one of the modelers who years ago did a nice uh, Sherman jumbo, he used a piece of uh, rail from a, a train track. You know, the Americans were great at that sort of stuff, whatever was a, around, mm -hmm. you know. So Rosengrant used a piece of rail, I'm using a piece of wood out of a barn, but uh, whatever was in the hood, you know, that's what you... So obviously this is just a support for their belongings, you know. It didn't come with the Sherman 
at the Ford plant. <laughs> and what did you make that? Did you make that? Is that just a piece of wood that you? Yeah, I just actually, I, it's just a piece of styrene, which uh, I scribed a little bit to give it some wood texture. It, yeah, chipped it up a little bit. Nice. You know, battle weathered kind of piece of wood, but it's actually a piece of evergreen stock. If you're going to use, and, mo and most Germans in the European theater of war had this cross piece, um, make sure that you put that on before your mud, because you're going to be chiseling out your nice project right. Right. Oh, get it if you forget. Yeah. Right. So think a little bit ahead. Right. Or storage for that matter, right? If it's on the lower ends of the vehicle. The yeah. packs would be exactly. a bit of that too. Yeah, yeah. So. You know, think it through the day before. Now this isn't going to... Um, takes a little bit to dry this asphalt. So what I'm going to do is uh, apply it onto the tank. And then I, I'm going to have to bring back a second episode to, to weather it and that sort of thing. So uh, this might be a shorter episode than normal, but I'm just going to apply the mud. And then... Um, and then the sort of project ends until the asphalt dries because the next step is to add the oil paints and what have you to the to the mud so not necessarily over top but just to harmonize it into the tank so you'll see what i mean once i once i get all this mud on it's gonna not look like that this then will take steps in oil paints to sort of bring it all together so so this is our sort of late January sort of mud going on here and I just use one of these great metal sticks from Tamiya you know we've all had we all have them and never know what to use them for <laughs> other than stirring and then we lose it but these chrome sticks are the best for all kinds of modeling you, there's just not an application better than that thing the applicator it's a great little tool And I just apply it as if I'm applying margarine to my tank here. I just have my little stick. So you can be messy now, yes? I can be messy. And the nice thing is this is acrylic. So if I don't like it, I can take it off. Mm -hmm. It's it's going to leave a brown or a dark stain on right. the tank, but that's okay too. But if you were to take it off, you'd have to do it relatively soon. Yeah, I'd, I'd, have, have, to, I'd have to do it within an hour. There you go. Or a lot, yeah, or it'll yeah. set. Yeah, it'll, it'll set, set. quicker than that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just looking for my little paintbrush, but what have I done with my little paintbrush? Just wait one second, fellas. Did you have it there? Yeah, here we go. I'm looking all over for it and it's two inches from me. There we go. So, not much is happening now. This doesn't look like mud, it doesn't look like anything. But it will shortly. And then working that in, Davey? Yeah, I'm just going to uh, blend it across. And then when I get to the other side, closer to where this... Uh, bogey would be this wheel um it would build up again you know like i have it built up and that's just again plain water you're using yes yes just yeah. plain water so you can see how it's built up on the sides yeah. versus yeah. you know in the center for yeah. one it's deckled and it, you yeah. want that deckle to show yeah. um so i'm just gonna fool around pushing it around but these rollers are going to generate and the tracks are going to generate a lot of Know, mud and mm -hmm. mess mm -hmm. flying up on the tank. So just you're just gonna finesse it right into the spot. And if you need more uh, ground cover, just throw a little bit more in the mix. A little pinch of parsley. Yeah. I've heard some models actually go to the. They actually use their garden and dirt. Some some guys. Yeah, as long as you paint it, garden dirt is fine. Mm -hmm. 
but it, it's not one to one scale. Right. It, that right. Garden dirt has to be painted. Yeah, and you believe it or not. Right. Or it doesn't look crush right. it a bit more. Yeah. Would you think that there's any advantage or disadvantage of using, like, Tamiya Thinner to do what you're doing now, or would that be dangerous? Oh, Tamiya Thinner works fine, except that what you don't want it to do is set off the olive drap. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, uh, unless you have a protective coating on it, and why would you do all that trouble and just use water? Yeah, because yeah. the water is, is not is not going to leach yeah. into the yeah. olive drab yeah. color. Plus, it's cheaper. Yes. There's a benefit. It's free. Free-ish. Free-ish, yeah. Now, the best effect with this is going to be once it's dry. Right now it's super glossy. It's one-to-one -one scale gloss, and I could go down on... We could talk all day about one-to-one -one scale <laughs> gloss versus 35th mm -hmm. scale gloss, but... What you sort of want is your mud to be sort of eggshell or a little bit, you know, in that, you don't want it super, super shiny, scale, except... Scale wet. Right. You you might have it super, super shiny down in here where it's yeah. close to the ground, close to the bog, close to the little stream that it just smashed into. But Now, now if you were to uh, fix that vehicle to a base or not, yep. are you one to also do the underside of the hull to all that work with this mud? Um... Just to some extent, yeah. just don't go crazy. Right, because nobody sees it. Nobody sees it. Yeah. But you're going to have to do something. Mm. So, as you guys can see, I'm just sort of finesse, right? But you can see how that decal changes across the front here versus on the other side of our little mm -hmm. uh, platform here. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of difference. And on our next episode, because I'm just about finished here, we'll let this tank go away and dry. And our next episode, we'll turn it into the end result. And the next thing is, it being acrylic, when I apply the oil paints to it, it's not going to other than um, it's not going to thin it down again it's not going to reactivate it it's not going to do anything because we're using oil paints yep and the thinner is not going to yep. you know get in, in amongst our asphalt and yep. disturb it in any way so nice. so the other thing like you said harvey you can you can take sand from the garden and mix it up you can i've used sand in here too mm. and, and it just takes on that this dark color yeah. the only thing is you have to be careful mud you never see the granular, yeah. uh, you know, in, in mud. You know, it's just a characteristic. All right, so I'm just finishing off the bottom of the tank, and I don't go too far back. I go a couple of inches into the back of the tank. And then what I can do is just um, airbrush a dark brown or almost black underneath just to give it an effect. But I'm going to glue it to the base, and the, ba the base is going to be contoured with you know, earth and what have you. So it's it's not really going to be an issue. Yeah, to, so nobody's going to see underneath. No, no one's going to see it. It's an hour. I'm never going to get back. <laughs> so um, no one's going to see it. But what we'll do now is um, I'm going to let this dry thoroughly. And, and then we're going to start to add the muddy oil paints to it. And um, maybe a little bit of pigment. And um, so I will see you guys shortly. Um, for our next episode, and thanks so much for watching, and I appreciate coming back and you know, bring, oh, yeah, it was great bring, doing like, a little video work. Like, so, like old times, said Warner Hobbies, Davey. Yeah, so thanks so much, Dave, for having me. Oh, it was great. Thank you for coming. All right. <laughs>